This segment of the news is brought to you by Sun Oil Limited. Welcome back. Cabbage beach vendors protesting this morning uprooting part of a recently erected fence which blocked their access to the beach. Vendors took action after their properties were moved without their consent or knowledge. JCN's Laurencia Smith was on Cabbage Beach this afternoon and files this report. Dozens of vendors who operated at Cabbage Beach demonstrated on Wednesday morning, claiming that they were denied access to the beach while their property was removed and damaged throughout the night without their knowledge and removed near the road. Here's Caprio Sarnas Miller of Larry's Coco Loco giving the vendors versions of the events. Um, I got a call this morning that they had some people, a team of people out here, they came out here at 12 o'clock while some people were sleeping at night, 12 o'clock in the night and moved all the vendors' chairs and umbrellas and bins. As you can see, what ain't get break up, missing. What ain't get break up, missing. Okay, a lot of vendors, umbrellas and chairs are missing and break up. You understand? This is our livelihood. This is how we feed our family. We refuse to move. And it's alleged that the minister administration governments um, sell the land to Royal Caribbean. It will be hell. We ain't gonna lay down and let no Bohemians, no foreigners come here and take our livelihood away from us. Minutes, you said your own mouth is the people's time. Who time it is? This is not the people's time. This is the foreigners' time. This is our livelihood. We refuse to move. We ain't moving. Otlin Collins, owner of Otlin's Chairs and Umbrellas Under the Sun, who has been a vendor at the beach for close to 16 years, says the actions of this morning is shameful, adding that he invested thousands of dollars purchasing chairs and umbrellas, which he claims are now damaged. You know, come on, give me no money for them stuff. I bought them stuff out of my own pocket. You understand? That's all I'm saying. Treat us like humans like we born in this country. Stop treating us like we drift here. I we did not drift here. We born here. And, it, and what we are saying to the Bahamas government, we respect all authorities, but also respect us. The vendors also calling on Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis to intervene. Now, if you remember, Dr. Minnis stood with the vendors when he was in opposition almost five years ago, who were facing similar issues. Today, members of the Coalition of Independents stood with the vendors. Party leader Lincoln Bean, who also stood with them, then, and party deputy leader Maria Jackson says, the beach is public property. No government has the right to block access. And my fellow Bahamans this afternoon, I, I, I tired of this government. Huh? They doing things to try to take bread out of the Bahamian people's mouth. These men and women being on this beach for almost 20, 30 years. We are tired. This is all they know. They cannot go back to school now to get another job. Need to eat. They need to eat. Why? Why? And the coconut vendors? The coconut is a Bahamian tea. Why now they want to take it away from the Bahamians? The vendors have been out of work since March of last year. All vendors have plans to make formal complaints with the police. Vendors here at Cabbage Beach says that they will do everything in their power to protect their livelihood. I'm Laurentia Smith for JCN News. In news from the Magistrates Court, 59-year-old Anton Johnson of Gregory Town Exuma and 27-year-old John Hanna of Dignity Gardens here in the capital were formally arraigned in Magistrates Court number 9 this afternoon for that million-dollar drug bust on Exuma this past weekend. The pair appeared before Chief Magistrate Joanne Ferguson Pratt, jointly charged with conspiracy to possess dangerous drugs with intent to supply, possession of dangerous drugs with intent to supply, conspiracy to import dangerous drugs, and importation of dangerous drugs with intent to supply. According to police, 58 packages of cocaine were discovered with a street value of $1,161,000. The duo entered a not guilty plea. A bail hearing is expected to take place on Thursday as the Crown did not have the necessary documents needed for the magistrate to make a decision on bail. Police need your help in finding 50-year-old Lisa Dayag. She was last seen on Saturday, June 12th at number 18 Merton Street, Chipping Ham. Her last known address was number 3 Sumeters Lane, Marathon Estates. She's said to be of a light brown complexion, stands 5 feet tall and of medium build. Anyone knowing the whereabouts is asked to call the Criminal Investigation Department at 502-9991 or 2. 
In other news from Parliament, the debate on the 2021-2022 fiscal budget has already produced some headline moments. On Monday, Member of Parliament for Baines and Grants Town, Travis Robinson, expressed his confidence on being returned as MP after the upcoming general elections. In fact, he went as far as to say that he expects to have a seat in the cabinet should the free national movement win. However, the main themes of Mr. Robinson's speech was to refute detractors who say this administration's performance has been dismal. Instead, he asserted that the Minnes-led administration in its short stint has done more for poor people than the PLP has ever done. In just four years, Mr. Speaker, four years, from 2017 to 2021, this government has provided more economic empower empowerment for poor people in our inner city communities than the PLP has ever done for poor people in 40 years. Mr. The Bain and Grantstown MP reminded members of the Economic Empowerment Zone Bill, which made inner city communities tax free zones that spawned the growth of small and medium sized businesses in the inner city prior to the pandemic. He further defended his claim by giving more examples of the government's success in the inner city, including the implementation of running water for the first time in some areas. Four versus 40. Mr. Speaker, I am pleased to announce and to report that for the first time in history, Mr. Speaker, in Bain and Grandstown, three corners, Quaco Street, Baller Street, and Finless Close will now have underground plumbing infrastructure to provide clean running water to residents for the first time in history. Four versus 40. Some 64 individuals that live through these corners, Mr. Speaker, will now have access to clean running water for the very first time. Four versus 40. He also encouraged the government to continue investing in the youth, noting that this administration has made it possible for many young people to receive an education at the University of the Bahamas. He also recommended the government's rehabilitation program and expungement of criminal records focus more on young people under 25 as opposed to men and women already in their 50s and 60s. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us. This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited.